What, what is preventing us from finding the latent um, knob for like every single phenotype we might care about um, in terms of help, helping with disabilities or enhancement? Is it the case that for any phenotype you care about, there will be one thing that is like uh, HGH for height? And how, would you, how do we find it? Biology, we, we, we've got a real gift, which is that it's both very much more complicated than almost anything we've designed from scratch. But it also is a lot more forgiving in a certain sense, is that you can have a, an animal or even a human that has two heads, which is not something that they evolutionarily, there was not evolutionary selection specifically to have two heads. Um, but just a, a, a just a little deviation from the normal developmental pattern during uh, you know fetal development, and and they both function fine. They control subsets of the body, uh, and um, you know they have their own personality, their own life. Um, so this you can there's all kinds of things you can do in biology that. Um, where you're working at a very high programming level is a, is a way of thinking about yeah. it. Uh, pushing us to a new level of intelligence is going to be very challenging um, and, and maybe not even urgent. Okay. Uh, um, to some extent, actualizing the people that we currently have would be quite, you know, just getting them all up to whatever speed they want to be up to um, yeah. within the range that's been demonstrated. So like some people are going to want to be like Einstein, some people won't. Um, uh, some people want to be healthy all the time, unlikely, but some people might not. Right. Some people might want to live to 150, some people might want to die at 80. But the, if you give them the, that, that range, that capability, you know, what if we had 8 billion super healthy don't need to worry about right. you know, food and drugs. Uh, super healthy, Einstein level of intelligence, um, education level, best we can come up right. with. Um, that would be a completely different world, right? Yeah. If, but, but just getting everybody to the healthy level, like how many, how much gene therapy would that take? It, it, it sounds like it wouldn't take that much if you think that yeah. there are these couple of knobs which control very high level right. functions. Yeah. So do you find them through the GWAS uh, genome wide association studies? Is it through like simulations of these? I would say mostly GWAS okay. uh, for humans, uh, maybe for animals in general, um, followed for animals with synthetic biology, you mm -hmm. know, um, and the, the smaller and the f cheaper and faster replicating, the, the more experiments you can do. Um, so. You know, uh, I don't want to overemphasize how single genes can do these amazing things, but there's also the possibility that multiple genes can be um, hypothesized and tested quickly. So, for example, I mentioned earlier, you know, what's the minimum number of transcription factors it takes to turn a stem cell into a neuron? Well, there's a bunch of recipes where you can do it with one, right? Maybe you want a specific neuron, you might need a few more. Um, but then uh, you can get, you can kind of quickly go to the answer by looking at each target cell type that exists, and you can see, well, what transcription factors did it use to get, did it, ha does it express at the time that it's the target? And then you say, well, let's just try those on the stem cell and see if they work. And that recipe has is, is worked quite well. It's the, it's the basis of GC Therapeutics a company and, and a bunch of the work that we do is you can almost you can get a recipe for almost every cell type in the body. Now, that's not new cell types, but at least you can, you've learned, to, to, to your point about reducing the number of genes we need to manipulate in order to get to a particular yeah. goal. Here's a whole series of goals, and we can get them with one two, three, you know, maybe seven change um, transcription factors. So um, that's an example, uh, and there's room for lots of other examples of where you can do a reduction and do not just reductionistic biology, but then constructionistic, where you take it back up and make a whole complex system and see what happens. Mm. Um, and then you, then you can do lots of those combinations and you debug them and so forth. Some of these things you can do um, 
you know, in vitro things you can do on probably on the order of 10 to the 14th, 10 to the 17th. Things that involve cells are typically in the billions. Um, but uh, we have this, this is how we're going to get, get um, inroads into the bio very complicated biological systems. If you enjoyed this clip, you can watch the full episode here and subscribe for more clips. Thanks.